SBR Videos is sponsored by Sports Cash System. Click on the link below for more information. Hi, welcome to SBR Foreign Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is the uh, opening line show that we do every Monday afternoon with Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. We take a look at uh, the recent opening lines and uh, discuss which ones we think might wind up being sharp sides, public sides, and which ones might move. Right now we're looking ahead to a very quirky week, NFL Week 17. Joe, thanks for being back with us. It is definitely a quirky week as the final week of the NFL season is, but thank you, Peter. Yeah, for sure. And there, there can be unique value in, in this last week, a little like the preseason. You know what I mean? You have to do your research, situational research. Uh, but a lot of times there can be more value in this week than, than in the average week during the rest of the regular season. Uh, and during the rest of the regular season this year, you went 26 and 14 against the spread in our free picks videos. Uh, so that's a great record. Congratulations, Joe Duffy. Give a quick plug for OffshoreInsiders.com. Yeah, no, it's been a rock solid year for us at OffshoreInsiders.com. Admittedly, the past few weeks, we keep hovering right around 500, had that heartbreaking loss Saturday in college football, but wound up splitting the college football. But it's been a great year. We work our tail off. Most importantly, it's going to be a great bowl season because we just work harder than everyone else at OffshoreInsiders.com. All right, sounds good. Well, if, if hard work is one of the things that you do well, Week 17 in the NFL might be, uh, you know, a great week for you because, you know, if you do your research, if you really look into uh, the situations, a lot of times there can be lines that are just based on, you know, season-long stats. They're just way off what they should be given the circumstances. So let's look at some of these lines. You know, there's a lot of teams that uh, control their own destiny, right? And I'm assuming that mm -hmm. those teams will be, uh, you know, public-backed teams, especially if they're like a home favorite like Miami, for instance. Miami, minus six and a half. They control their own destiny. They're at home against a crappy team like the Jets. Uh, you think that's going to be a big public side and maybe uh, too much so? Yeah, no question about it. The public always loves to bet the teams that want to win it, that need to win it more. Pittsburgh is another team that's mm -hmm. in a situation where they do need to get some help from uh, you know some other the scoreboard they're not automatically in if they win but they do must win and they're playing a team that's playing in a, a meaningless game for them so as far as the big motivational advantages uh, they are the, two of the games that definitely jump out but whether or not you know the the motivational advantages are truly good handicapping angles we could do a half hour show on that right right and then uh, there's three other huge favorites and I'm wondering which ones you think might be uh, public uh, sides maybe they'll all be public sides New Orleans minus 13 at home against Tampa Bay Denver minus 13 at Oakland and then of course Seattle off of the uh, the loss minus 10 at home against the Rams uh, you think all those will be big public back sides now, you are right. New Orleans is another team that's in a virtual must-win game. They could theoretically lose and still backdoor mm -hmm. their way into the playoffs, but they are a team that pretty much is in a much-win situation against a Tampa Bay team that obviously hasn't had any chance of the playoffs for some time. So, yes, the public will certainly bet them. I think, though, if, it, if it's bet all the way up to 14, that is a big number. That's when maybe the Sharps might uh, come back on the underdogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Seattle, I mean, they, they are still playing for some playoff positioning. Um, it's not quite as big of a game for them as it is the other teams, but yes, yeah, Seattle still needs that playoff positioning, and they've been a public team all year. So to say that there is no logical reason why the public would bet the underdog in that game. All right, and then Denver at Oakland, same deal? Yeah, no, Denver is a team that right now what they have to play for is home field advantage throughout the playoffs. They've already clinched a bye. Uh, it's obviously not a must-win situation for them, but... Of course, they would love to play New England or whomever they wind up theoretically playing in the AFC Championship game. They want to play at home. So, yes, the public is going to definitely be betting on Denver. Be a little careful of that because, obviously, Peyton Manning got the record. Plus, Von Miller is now out for the Broncos. So, you know, it's not like it's a must-win situation for Denver. Mm -hmm. It's an important game. The public will certainly be betting on Denver. Whether or not that should be the sharp play, I'm not so sure. All right, so we've just identified five teams that are all substantial favorites, uh, you know, with playoff implications in their games. And uh, we pretty much think that the public will favor the favorites in all of those games. What's your take on what the sharp action might be? Do you think the sharp action is definitely going to be on the dog or, or nothing? Or do you think the sharp action is going to just completely pass on all five of them? What do you think? Well, I, 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 like I said, I think in that situation, because Denver has motivation, but it's not like they have tons of motivation, mm -hmm. and they're going to be laying tons of points. So I would think there could be some sharp action on Oakland. Mm -hmm. And I used to, for years and years, and we talked about this on our preseason video, unfortunately it does not apply at all this weekend, but I've always loved to bet, and it's been a big sharp bet. Admittedly, it's tailed off in the past 
few years. And again, another one we could do a whole half hour video on why. But teams in true spoiler situations playing at home, mm -hmm. at home in true spoiler situations, unfortunately, we don't have that angle this year where they, they, that would be a home team that has no chance of making the playoffs playing a team that needs to win the go in the playoffs. Usually the home team under those circumstances is a good sharp play. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this year doesn't look like there are any situations where that applies. All right, so then looking over the whole card, uh, you know, with the, the opening lines that are out right now, what one uh, line do you think might be a, uh, might wind up being a sharp side? I'll tell you what I think might wind up being a sharp side. Mm -hmm. Maybe Washington plus three and a half at the Giants. You know, that's kind of a, you know, both those teams are out of it. But there is a little bit of a revenge here for Washington. The Giants went into Washington and beat them. And the Giants are coming off of, you know, a big OT spoiler uh, game last week where they uh, eliminated the Lions. So maybe they're, you know, in a little bit of a maybe emotional letdown spot here. Washington coming in with revenge, getting three and a half. That might be a sharp side. What do you think? It could be. Some people would say just the opposite could mm -hmm. also be true. Washington had a chance to play spoiler against their most hated rival, the Dallas right. Cowboys, sure. and lost a heartbreaker. But I do think that Kirk Cousins has given them a little bit of an emotional lift. So that's probably, I do still, at the end of the day, agree with you. Washington would be the more motivated team here, not only because of the revenge angle, but because, like I said, I think, you know, the whole Kirk Cousins situation has given them a little bit something extra to play for and to see if he is also a quarterback that can be their quarterback of the future. If RG3 turns out that, you know, he's not their quarterback of the future or somebody who could, uh, you know, bring them a couple draft picks. So I agree, but not so emphatically. All right. So it, out of all the lines that are out right now, which one uh, strikes you as the most likely to wind up being uh, a side that the Sharps are favoring? Yeah, I actually think the Sharps will go with Dallas as a home underdog. This really? is a true de facto playoff game. The only thing is I'm a little bit surprised that th there's a line on this because Tony Romo starts to get an MRI. I'd be shocked if Romo doesn't play. But again, in what is essentially a, a one-game playoff game, I was surprised to see Philadelphia is laying two and a half plus juice in their three in some areas. That's a pretty big road favorite, although they are admittedly the hottest team in the NFL right now. And certainly the hottest team in a true must-win situation. Yeah, and I mean, just in general, you know, a Dallas at home as a favorite is, is, is something you love to bet against. Here they're an underdog, but... Dallas in a big game, no matter what the line is, is probably also something you want to bet against. I think that, uh, you know, the, the public is just so used to seeing uh, Tony Romo choke time and time <laughs> again that uh, maybe the, the, the books think that, uh, that uh, the public will bet Philadelphia here. Yeah, no, that's true. And we had Washington as a wise guy play yesterday. They mm -hmm. did manage to cover despite losing the game, you know, in the, in the last minute. Um, you are correct that Tony Romo, if, if this game were a pick em or if Dallas were the favorite, I think that both the public and the Sharps will be all mm -hmm. over Philadelphia. But this is a pretty big line. You know, whether or not Tony lead in Dallas at that game-winning drive, that doesn't completely eliminate the monkey off of his back. But it certainly was a big confidence booster there. And if anything, I wouldn't be surprised if the public bets this one over because Dallas' offense is very good. They can't stop mm -hmm. anybody. And as we know, Nick Foles has been the second coming since taking over as quarterback. Right. All right. And are there uh, any other lines that have caught your eye for any reason that we uh, haven't mentioned yet? Um, I would think if, if there is any team that already has a playoff spot clinched but still has plenty of motivation to win, it would be Cincinnati because they're playing for a uh, to play at home in the first round. And Cincinnati, they're much like the New Orleans, New Orleans Saints have been where they are tremendous at home. They are so, so on the road. Of course, Baltimore is in a must-win situation. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Cincinnati has more than plenty to play for. Andy Dalton has been pretty darn good at home, but he has been lousy on the road. So Cincinnati, although they're in the playoffs, they still are playing for home field advantage. And I think arguably home field advantage means as much to them as any team that's already clinched but is still playing for positioning. All right, yeah, the Dallas and Philly is a de facto playoff game in the sense that, uh, you know, the winner goes to the playoffs, the loser is out. And the, uh, the Chicago-Green Bay game is the same way. There's no line out right now. you have any, thought, any early week thoughts on that game at all? Well, yeah, and there probably won't be a line until Friday afternoon, the same, you know, the weekly Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. melodrama. But Chicago, the whole Jay Collins, I think, if anything, I would lean towards going with Green Bay. As you know, I've never been a Jay Cutler fan and all of a sudden you're seeing why, but the whole Jay Cutler gave the approval to have Tressman as the coach. There's no way that, that Tressman can go with anyone other than Cutler, and he's already made it official that he will. 
So Matt Flynn's probably going to start for Green Bay. Not that I'm a big fan of his, but I would probably lean towards taking the road underdog. Unless, you know, obviously if somehow Aaron Rodgers does play, Green Bay would be the road favorite, but I doubt if he will. I would go with the underdog Green Bay. All right. Great opening line show. As always, Joe Duffy, thanks for doing these uh, all regular season long. And uh, I'll talk to you again later in the week. We'll preview a few of these games specifically. All right. Thank you, Peter.